have a very interesting guest here today. I'm with uh, Betsy Ehrenberg, and she is heading up a very interesting company. Actually, she's the founder of um, Legacy Concierge. And uh, if we, you know, learn a little bit about uh, Betsy, she's a visionary inter entrepreneur who uh, solves privacy and security problems related to wealth generation and estate preservation. And we're obviously going to learn much more today about what Legacy Concierge is doing in detail and who is it actually for. Um, and uh, she's been surrounding herself with experts in the field and um, you know, just enjoys uh, building up businesses uh, also from Silicon Valley. And you know, if we look you know, a little bit away from the working desk, she also loves to, you know, do some downhill skiing in the valleys of Tahoe. Um, and um, basically, uh, she's also on top of that, not just an entrepreneur, just not sportive, but also a contemporary studio glass art collector. So a very broad range of experiences and interests. So I welcome you to the show, Betsy, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, maybe at the very beginning, tell us uh, in your own words um, all about Legacy Concierge. What is it all about, um, yeah, in a couple of words? Well, Legacy Concierge offers a service to help individuals find digital assets after a person passes away. Mm -hmm. The problem we solve is that estate value is not known because everything is electronic today. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of going to mailboxes or file cabinets. Everything is electronic. So we help the client find all the assets that belong to the estate. Makes a lot of sense. And who would be typically using that? Like, you know, if I'm, I'm thinking now about, I, I can see so many different uh, scenarios where this would be used, but what would be a typical use case, um, a typical company or individual using um, the product? Well, the company that would use it is usually a professional, a trust administrator, a trust and estate attorney, or a family office manager. And the situation is a person passes away and while the family is grieving, the professional is asked to step in and preserve the value of the estate. Well, first of all, they can't find the estate because it's all digital assets and electronic records. So we use technology to find all the components of the estate, present it to the responsible person, and then protect it from losing value. Very interesting. Okay. So these types of trusted attorneys right how do they actually hear about legacy concierge like what would be a typical maybe let's call it journey that they would be going through in order to you know start hearing about legacy concierge and then finally starting to actually apply and use the technology most of our clients have an education requirement cle ce and they go to conferences to hear guest speakers I am one of those guest speakers. Mm -hmm. They also have magazines that they read online, and I have written many articles about that. So it's word of mouth, awareness of the problem. The professionals have an educational requirement every year. So I fulfill that requirement with uh, webinars. In the olden days, I used to teach and speak at seminars. We don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Nobody is having a seminar. Makes sense at the moment. Very much so. And um, as you were saying, as sort of maybe the locations changed a bit where, where people talk about the topic and where also, you know, you're finding clients, what role does the website play for client acquisition in these days? Right now, the website talks about the problem and shows a person how to organize their digital assets when they are alive. This is not a necessary step for us to provide our service, but it illustrates and asks the client to recognize that their estate records are digital and electronic, and they may forget that all their Facebook photos are part of their estate, mm -hmm. the documents that they've written, their art collections, they may have a spreadsheet somewhere. So, our website introduces the problem and prompts people to get organized. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Makes a lot of sense. So it is actually uh, for a couple of personas, 
different people in different scenarios in their life where they would be starting through the website. Um, what would you say is currently a strength of the website? Is it the ability then, you know, if somebody comes to the website, grasps and actually signs up, so the ability to convert? Is it the amount, the quality of the leads in, in the sense that they're actually, you know, they're matching your services? Or is it the, the content that you provide? Like, where do you see a strength of the website at the moment? Right now, I don't think the website is converting visitors. Mm -hmm. I think it is educating people. Many professionals, trust and estate attorneys, financial advisors are relying on files that they currently know about. Very traditional insurance policies, investments, real estate. And although those are major components of estates, mm -hmm. what they're missing are cryptocurrency, which is a digital asset, the photographs, the documents, and they're missing all the credit cards, all the insurance policies, mm -hmm. because they are not aware that these are represented in the world or on computers as electronic records. And they, the financial advisor, the trust administrator has not necessarily gotten up to date and knows about the digital world in which we live. It makes a lot of sense. It's really the strength of educating the visitors as they're coming to the page you mentioned. On the flip side, where do you see room on improvement or room for improvement on the website? In terms of, you know, maybe conversions? I, I, the, the website does not scream out and say, there is a solution to this problem. And the solution can either be a person spends 120 hours trying to find all the components of the state, or they use our service to electronically find and be a detective, almost a forensic detective, and find the assets that belong to the person who passed away. Yeah, so it's about messaging, right? From what I'm hearing here, it's the, a clear message that runs home. Yeah. Interesting. And the message has to be, um, this is not a problem that you want to ignore because over $60 billion worth of assets go unclaimed every year. Over 600,000 estates become victims of identity theft every year. That represents over 13% of all the deaths. This year, as you are well aware, we have an extra 10% of deaths due to the okay. pandemic. Nevertheless, even with 2.8 million deaths per year, the top 5% represent in wealth 140,000 estates that are not protected after death. And the fraudsters are looking for them. And within 10 days, they can steal and do steal $20 million, $2 million, because people believe that digital assets are social media. And they say, I don't use social media. I don't have a problem. And they don't realize that their credit reports are, so are digital assets and contain a wealth of information that a fraudster wants and can get to because the credit reporting companies have not been notified of the death in a timely fashion. So having studied the security problem for over five years, my team and I have created a library of what's out there. What should a person be looking for and how quickly should they find it mm -hmm. and, and protect it? Because that is the legal responsibility of the trust administrator, the estate administrator. They have three responsibilities. And the first is to assemble the components of an estate. If they ignore the digital assets and the electronic records, they're not doing their job. Step two and three, I won't go through, but that's the first step is assemble the components of an estate. 
makes complete sense. Uh, it's it's great that you're sort of illustrating also the weight of the problem, right? It's it's very it's not something you think about every day, obviously. So yeah. very people very don't think about death, even in today's world where on television we see every day statistics. Yeah. People, older people say, "I'm not going to die. It's not such a big problem." Younger people say, I have plenty of time to organize my estate. So whether you're older or younger, generally there's a sense of uh, selfishness, so I guess. I don't have the problem. If it's an interesting topic and then they move on to where shall we go for dinner? <laughs> so that people don't want to think about the problem until it's too late. And quite frankly, 80% of our business is initiated by the person who's left behind, who says, I think Uncle Joe had 500,000 airline miles. How can I get them? Yep. Yep. The financial advisor, the trust administrator doesn't really think that's important. We know it's important. Peace of mind. Makes a lot of sense. I would love to switch gears a little bit and learn about you as a leader in, in the company. Um, could you tell me, like, what type of content do you consume? How do you educate yourself further to, you know, have, have current knowledge? Well, first of all, my education is in computer science and business. Mm -hmm. uh, first, a lot of computer science, working for IBM and Hewlett Packard always being involved with the installation of computers to solve a problem. Computers aren't there as a piece of furniture. They're there to solve a problem. So the problem solving is intriguing to me. So that's just um, something that I live with. I love to solve problems. And I surround myself and build companies with uh, technical people and marketing people who love to solve problems as well. So my journey was first just learning the technology and then working for big companies that in fact were solving problems. And there are only three kinds of solutions. One, that will save time. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it'll save money. And the third, it'll just do it more beautifully, more completely, and it can be measured, but not quite as easily. Before we had the solution, we would be losing $100 million a year of our clients' wealth. Now that we are using technology, we are not losing it. That's the measure. And so I'm passionate about the security issues and the discoveries that technology can provide to save money, save time, and make it just a better solution. And in our case, it's peace of mind. And that's who I am. That's what Legacy Concierge is. And our team has that same passion as well as incredible technical and marketing skills. Very good. I would love to jump into our rapid fire questions. It's just a couple of short and crisp questions and answers. Are you ready for those? Absolutely. Very good. So what's the last book that you read? <laughs> the impossible to the inevitable. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. What's the one single thing that your company is focused on the most at the moment? Privacy and security, mm -hmm. technology, solutions. We will never find everything. We're constantly finding new things that need to be protected. If there would be no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing that you would want to have fixed for the company today? Using more artificial intelligence and analyzing what we have discovered so that we can go back to the custodians, go back to the companies and let them know that here's all the information that you are storing about people that A, you're not making them aware of and B, you're not protecting. Mm -hmm. An example, Facebook keeps over 100 categories of information about each user. 
The user doesn't know that. And why should they do that? What's the last thing that kept you awake at night about the company? Um, adoption. Adoption that they're in hundreds of interviews. And in fact, when I started the company, I interviewed over 100 attorneys mm -hmm. and trust administrators from San Diego to Boston, Miami to Seattle. With the exception of three people, every person said, you know, that is a big problem. I never thought about it. That's interesting that you're solving it. Mm -hmm. And then the next good question is, do you want to have access to technology that will in fact locate, identify and secure all those assets? Well, no, 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 I don't have a problem today. Mm -hmm. You know what? Mm -hmm. Everybody has this problem today, mm -hmm. but they don't want to talk about it. It's, it's, it's not like a new car. I see. I see. Inter in very interesting dynamic that is going on there. My next question would be, if today would be your very first day and you, you brought up those interviews, you un interviewed um, a lot of individuals in order to you know, be also at the place where you guys are today, my question would be, what is one advice that you would give yourself if you would restart the company today? Concentrate more on adoption mm -hmm. than on traction. Traction is very easy to measure, $100,000 in sales a month. Adoption has to happen first before revenue. I didn't concentrate on adoption. Betsy, I really appreciate that you took the time with us today and uh, you know, shared um, the story about the company showed us what legacy concierge is all about and you know why the company exists and, and what you've been learning uh, along the way. So I really appreciate that you took the time. I want to give you the very last word of the interview. If somebody would forget everything about the interview and what we discussed, what would be one thing that they should remember about legacy concierge? Legacy concierge helps people find assets and protect assets after there has been a death in the family. Thanks a lot, Betsy, for being part of Pathfinder Presents today. Okay, you're very welcome.